Usually I have uh, music playing and all that good stuff. I just couldn't do it tonight. Didn't have enough time. Uh, let's see if I can get this going. I invited on somebody who is running for governor of Nevada. Oh, this is kind of funny how I got set up, but I'll have to work. So hopefully we'll get on. We'll talk about uh, oh, we'll talk about what's going on in the great state of Nevada that has been going downhill slowly in the last couple of years. They're invited on. Hopefully they jump. Uh, they jump onto the the video, the live feed. Sorry, but I got some in my face. Oh. They're invited on. So we'll be talking to Ryan Bundy if he if he's able to get on. And then uh, next week on Tuesday, we'll be talking to Shauna Cox. Let's see. There we are right there. And uh, admins, please share because I forgot to share the video. I'll have to share it at the end of this. Um, my little sidekick ends up crying in the background. Sorry about that. Man, who was watching that Kavanaugh stuff? It's scary. Very scary. So it's adding, it's, it looks like it's adding you on. Shauna Cox will be on Tuesday talking about Levinican. Uh, Lavoy Finnegan, I meant to say Levinican. I'm sorry about that. My mind's going all over the place because I'm trying to hurry up and get this stuff done, and then i got to be a dad too, so sorry about that. It says it's adding, so we'll wait to see if you can get on. Just hit the accept button and turn your phone sideways. So if you turn your phone sideways and you hit accept, it will bring you up onto the video. And then we'll make sure we'll share this in all the groups. We'll add all the friends that have their groups. And hopefully we can help uh, Mr. Bundy raise his money that he needs. I think it was $4,000 I heard, uh, the money that he needs. So whew, when you're in a rush, grab some coffee or some tea. All right, let's see. Hold on one second. Kids. I should have brought the radio down. I'm kidding. Oh. Yeah, so on the phone, if you're trying to turn it sideways, turn it sideways and hit the green button, you should be able to come on. It should say accept, I think. Ripping up her dolls, tearing some dresses apart. I don't know what that child's doing. Anyway. <laughs> All right, it's connecting, so that's good. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. Uh, so, not only am I going to be doing a video with you, I plan on doing a video with Shauna Cox. She told me to tell you. She told me to tell you hi. I think you know who she is. Oh yes, absolutely. So let me uh, let me see if I can get this uh, these earphones out so they don't. And, and can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I was having the same problem. Can you hear my, me now? my right one is. Yeah, I can hear you just fine. They sound pretty good. Okay. Like the hat, I wish I could rock one. I don't look good with a cowboy hat on. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't look good without it. So. <laughs> I'm not um, sure how to bet. There we so go. So what? Uh, what can I do? Uh, how do you want to proceed? Well, let's start off real quick, uh, give everybody a little bit of, of a recap. Well, I know who you are, and so do many of the people that are watching, but a little recap of who you are. You're running for governor of Nevada, right? That is correct, yes. And I think you're still trying to raise some funds for your campaign, right? Well, always. We're you know, uh, always needing more just to make sure we can get all the advertising out we can. I am trying to oh, yeah. just some television ads and so forth it gets awful expensive in a hurry uh anyway oh, so, i bet but so we appreciate some that would come but and so if there's anyone who's willing to send and please do and and we would appreciate do you have it, a so website that. that we could go to to donate some money to you yes uh go to governorbundy.com and okay uh, there you can view my issues and see kind of what's going on in my campaign and there's also a place to donate. Well, let's get a little bit of your backstory because there's a lot of people in some of the groups that don't know who you are. I do. I've followed everything with your family for the last couple of years. Um, and I'm just going to give you the floor and let you talk and tell everybody who you are and 
why you're running for governor. I was watching, well, you were on the phone, but I was watching InfoWars when you were on. Great interview with David Knight, man. David's a pretty cool guy. Well, thank you. Yeah, that was this morning, and I am scheduled to be on that show again uh, on Monday. I believe it's Monday, the October 8th. And, oh, cool. Uh, it'll be, it'll be fairly birthday, early right again. Yeah, so. Are you going on the morning right. show, or are you going to be on with David? Yeah, I'll be on with David Knight, uh, just like I was this morning. It'll be the morning show, cool. yes. So, Sweet. All right. Well, um, for introduction, my name is Ryan Bundy. I am the son of Cliven Bundy, mm-hmm. and I was uh, born and raised here on the ranch here in southern Nevada. <clears throat> and, of course, as most of you know, we had some incidents in, in April of uh, 2014 where the federal government attacked us with uh, a large force. Uh, there was close to 200 armed men, and uh, they had a full military-type base and set up uh, scramblers to scramble our communications and surveillance equipment over our house and snipers around the farm. And uh, several times I was in the, you know, in the crosshairs of snipers and was able to look right down their scopes at me and my wife and my children. Um, you know, of course, all of that's pretty much pretty much known information. Oh, um, yes, you can go online and watch a lot of videos on that. Yeah. You know, uh, prior to all that uh, coming about, um, I had a conversation with one of the BLM uh, special agents, and in that conversation, we we spoke about who has law enforcement authority, and, of course, they were claiming they did. I told them they did not, and... Uh, You know, they were wanting to be able to do this whole seizure and roundup peacefully without any, without any harm. And I said, I said, well, if you want peace, then, you know, simply don't show up. And they said, well, you better not bring guns. And I said, well, you better not bring guns because you have no authority to be taking our our property. And we, we, we bantered back and forth to that manner. And then he said, he said, well, this will be the next Waco or Ruby Ridge and we will kill you. He told me that 10 days in advance. And so I knew what to expect to some degree. It was still startling to see um, a whole military force, you know, descend upon us. And that was humbling. There has been a, I got to admit it because I'm going to have to call Dennis Michael Lynch and apologize to him. There's one thing that I do stand with him. He was there with you guys. Uh, I've criticized him a little bit because he's not doing what we thought he was going to do with his platform, but he's definitely always talking good about you guys and a lot of people in the grassroots movement. I just wish he would get back to doing his show, but um, now you're running for governor of Nevada. I'm kind of skipping ahead because I don't know if you want to talk about some of the hairy stuff that you went through. I think that's a little personal, but um, what is it? That, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. You saw what happened with Kavanaugh today. Everybody did. I mean, our government's in disarray. You know, I'm a person who believes in the Constitution. I think that we should have pocket constitutions if we're going to talk about the law and how our states in our country should be governed. I mean, what is your platform? What are you really trying to accomplish uh, running for the governor? Well, there's several things I'm really trying to accomplish. The first thing is to ensure that Nevada is recognized as a sovereign state in the union one that is equal in, in footing to the original 13 states, and that does include the ownership and control of the land uh, to be in the hands of the people of the state of Nevada rather than the federal government. And so that, that, that is a, a major and probably the first and foremost part of my campaign, and I will accomplish that. Uh, the other part is... Good. Uh, There's a lot of people reform. who wish uh, you, you were running in our states... I have heard that a lot from both uh, Utah, Idaho, Arizona. Anyway, so I've heard that, heard that some. Sorry, I kind of cut you off. I didn't mean to. Uh, What did you say right after that? um, You said uh, reform. What were you talking about? Yes, yes. uh, Judicial reform. And what I mean by, what I mean by that is, of course, you know, through our experience uh, and also witnessing others go through these courts and trials, 
I can see that the government and the prosecutors and the, the judges, they're not conducting fair trials. And they're not um, mm -hmm. allowing uh, the rights that are supposed to be guaranteed to, to the accused to take place. You know, I personally was denied every single right that's supposed to be guaranteed to me in the Bill of Rights. But, but we're not alone. It's happening to thousands of people across the country. And this has to stop. You know, when I read the Constitution and try to figure out, okay, what authorities does, does the federal government have? And if you read Article 3, I ought to just get me a Constitution in my hand. I pretty much always have one. I started this meeting without one. I'll see if I can... Uh, Come across. Are you going to be talking about there. Article Three Three? Got tons of them, and I got like six thousand. Yes, um, because Article Three is where ju the the government, uh, the judiciary, gets its authority, um, and it lays out in Article Three, Section Two, Clause One, the the jurisdictions that the federal courts have, and there's six jurisdictions. Now, all of those jurisdictions are civil jurisdictions. None of them are criminal. And then in Article 3, uh, Section 2, Clause 3, it lays out that the trial of all crimes shall be in the state. And that state is capitalized. That's a proper term. That means that the, the jurisdiction to try criminal activity is within the state. The federal courts yeah. do not have the authority to try crimes, and yet that's what's taking place. They're running all these crimes through federal court, and uh, and it, it's unjust because they don't have the jurisdiction. Uh, furthermore, uh, Amendment Six states that the the accused shall enjoy the right to a trial uh, by a jury of the state. Now, that means that that jury belongs to the state. That means it's a state jury. It's not just people from the state. It's a state jury. Okay, so, so both uh, Article 3 and uh, the Sixth Amendment note that the federal courts do not have authority to try crimes. Okay, they're supposed to be mediators and, and trial of, of, of facts and situations, the judges are supposed to be able to make determinations on, on the civil jurisdictions that they are given, but not criminal, not criminal. And so, and so as governor, I will take an oath to uphold the Constitution, and therefore I will be under obligation to make sure that the Constitution is being lived up to in every respect. And, and thus bring a stop to these federal prosecutions where they're detained men of, of their rights that are supposed to be guaranteed by the Constitution. Well, what's good is you actually have firsthand experience with people not using the Constitution trying to charge you. I mean, that's who I would want is somebody who actually reads the Constitution and uses it. If we had a... Uh, we had a lot of people who actually had a pocket constitution when they're trying to use and break the laws. It would be uh, we'd have better government. Yeah, uh, you know that would be interesting. It uh, I lost you there for a second, so I didn't hear everything you said. But I uh, understand that you were talking if other elected officials would adhere to and read the constitution, particularly you know kept one in their pocket and referred to it often. Yeah, that would make some major changes. They, if they understood it, and if they understood that, especially the federal government, is limited in power by the Constitution. Uh, the Constitution, of course, grants its powers, but at the same time, it limits it. And and that's the problem: is government seems to know no bounds. <clears throat> they seem to no no limits and there's nobody there to hold them accountable um to those limits and and but that is exactly what the states are supposed to do you know the the states created the federal government the union is a union of 
states. The states are its members. And uh, each branch and each level of government is supposed to be a check and a balance to the other. And so when the federal government steps out of line, it's up to the states to put it back in line. Now, of course, if a state steps out of line, oh, yeah. then that's one of the jurisdictions that federal courts have to help place the state back in line also. And so, you know, each level of government is supposed to keep the other in line, but both are supposed to be protecting the rights of individual people, not protecting the power and strength of government, but protecting the rights of the individual. And I think that's where a lot of our elected officials fail when they're trying to land grab people's property. Uh, it's just, it's very scary when you research what they're doing and how they're using uh, their own laws, not the laws in the con. It's sad. Uh, I was watching a video where a lot of the people who are in office don't even know the Constitution, you know, so. Well, especially you know, the Democrats. Uh, they, they don't bother to study it. They have forgotten it, and they, and they simply look to all the acts of Congress and all the, the star decisis, uh, you know, case law, you know, uh, the judicial creep. Uh, is, is, as it's said sometimes, where the laws change by the, the different um, court rulings that take place. The problem is, is they're forgetting their foundation and they're forgetting what we really are supposed to be. And that is, in part, why we're in such dire straits right now. Since you've... Uh started to run for the governor of Nevada. Have, have they been trying to come back and attack you because of this? Well, I don't, I, you know, I'm not certain that that's the reason why, but they are uh, trying to appeal the court decision. That's what I the heard. The judge's decision, by the way, and trying to put us back into prosecution. And so that's in, in progress right now. So they, they, they want to see us, uh, face jeopardy once again. We already faced jeopardy. And they're wanting to try to place us back in double jeopardy. I don't think it's going to happen. Our prayers are with you. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. When you look in Nevada, I've actually been watching the decline in everything with the government. The laws are changing with some of the stuff with the, the BLM. Uh, no, I'm not talking Black Lives Matter. Bureau of Land Management. A lot of people who own land or cattle. It's just crazy. It's like a I'll be talking to uh, Shauna Cox pretty soon. She's going to talk about Lavoie Finnegan and, and what was going on with that situation. And I just don't think enough people are awake to how our rights are being infringed upon with our property, with uh, the things you own, your land. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, you've broken up so much. I haven't been able to follow what you're trying to tell me. So you might have to recap that a little bit. Hopefully, I can keep in contact. I don't know. You keep you keep breaking up. That's no, okay. It could be your Wi-Fi. Sometimes it happens to you. My my Wi-Fi. If my phone's on a Wi-Fi or whatever. Um, no, I was all I was going to say was, you know, our rights are being so infringed upon, especially with what happened to your family and your dad. You know, the, the land grabbing, uh, if they can't get your land, they'll attack your cattle, your horses, your livestock uh, to get your attention to try to hand over your property. Uh, hopefully, if you get that governor, uh, the governorship, become governor of Nevada, you can exploit the truth and have more people start following the law. You know, I got to have uh, breakfast. It was actually just by chance with the lady that's running for the lieutenant governor of uh, New Mexico. Michelle Garcia Holmes, I think she's going to be good, her and Steve Pierce. And it's that's what you guys have to go through just to get your name out there, just to go through the electoral process. You know, you're trying to wake people up. You're trying to get votes. There's a lot of people who are blind with what is not being followed within the laws and the obstruction of justice. And it's, it's almost crazy to think that they would try to take you back to court and uh, reopen a case just because you want to run to be governor of Nevada. It's, it's disgusting. Well, and I don't know if that's just the reason why these, these uh, federal government don't seem to ever back off or ever realize that they, that they 
you know, need to be put in their place. And so they always want to keep pressing, keep pressing and keep pressing until they finally pin a, you know, man down. You know, I, 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 we've got a good friend who uh, has been going through some of that. They've actually run him through trial four times and they have not been able to convict ah. him until the very last time they finally, you know, manipulate the court cases enough and bring in, you know, bring in false witnesses and et cetera, until they finally convince a jury that, that he's guilty. And, um, and, and so, you know, they just, they just never stop. And so, you know, I don't know what their next move is against us. I know that they're working on trying to repeal or to appeal the Judge Navarro's decision to dismiss the case with prejudice. You know, whether or not that's because of this run for governor, I don't know. But uh, anyway. Well, I mean, I bet you a lot of people have probably rallied behind you guys too, right? I know you got a lot of support too, especially all over America. There's a lot of people who follow not only what happened with you, but with LaVoy. And you guys are real patriots, man. You know, when you're looking at some of these people who claim to be in the patriot movement and to stand up for America, you know, to, to think what you guys went through and then uh, face possible prosecution is just nuts for what? Standing up for your rights, the Constitution, the laws that you, were afforded to you as a born citizen of this country? Well, you know, uh, the government doesn't want to recognize any of our rights, and that's exactly why we are where we're at. If they would recognize our rights as being rights, then we wouldn't have a problem here. Um, and so, yes, we recognize them. We stand up for them. They do not. And so, they're, therefore, that's the battle line. And, of course, that's, that's where we're at. So, you know, yeah, we do have a lot of support. Um, and and thankful, th thankfully, we've had that. Uh, all the support and all, everyone who showed up there in April of 2014, you know, they, they saved our lives, but they also, you know, affected uh, what's been taking place since. And if it weren't for all that support, we would probably be dead now um, and or imprisoned for, you know, the rest of our life. That certainly was their goal. They wanted to kill us one way or the other, either kill us by a bullet of the gun or kill us behind steel bars one way or the yep. other. They wanted us dead. Well, we support you. I know that, uh, I'll be honest with you, man, with everything that's going on in our country, these sanctuary cities, these illegal alien criminals that come into our country and take over our citizens' rights. Uh, I've done interviews with angel families. You know, it's sad to kind of see the breaking down of everybody in the grassroots movement to save America. Um, you know, the only thing I can do is, uh, while on my end, we'll post your website to all the groups we can, Try to support you the best way we can. Uh, Shauna Cox told me to tell you hi. Uh, I guess she hasn't talked to anybody in a while. She was in Austin just a little bit ago. But uh, I mean, what I mean, what, what do you see our country as? I know you have a vast opinion, a uh, big opinion on what's going on, especially with Nevada, New Mexico, Utah. It's just crazy. We in California, it's just nuts. All of a lot of what's going on in our states, it's just nuts. Well, uh, you know, I hope to, you know, I certainly hope to be able to obtain this governor position. And then from what I begin to do from here, I'm hoping that other states will then take courage and, and follow suit. Um, you know, I'm willing to stand. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I, I, I have the courage. I have the, uh, the knowledge. Um, but, but still, I can't do it alone. And it would certainly be nice if other states will, will step in. But, you know, to, to get our, our, our liberty back the way it should be, it is going to take the state government to do it. You know, we've been calling upon the state for 25 years to protect our rights, and, and yet we've, we've gone unheeded. Uh, you know, our petitions um, have, have been ignored, and that's disheartening. Um, Sorry, I'm just digesting what you're saying because that is disheartening. I mean, you know, it's uh, everything your family worked for and what you've worked for, and then you're being attacked. Even when you're trying to run for governor, I guarantee there's people still attacking. Politi uh, politics are real dirty. Um, 
I mean, what can people do? In your opinion, what can we really do to help our country well, to become uh, uh, more in sync with the Constitution? I, I guess you can move to Nevada and register to vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, you know, you know, you know, you could say it's up to the voters, and, and technically it is. But, um, you know, we've seen miracles happen before, you know, and, and I'm certainly going to need another miracle to obtain this position. You know, we made it through the court uh, proceedings. Um, you know, I don't know if you, if you realize, but the government prosecutors succeed in convicting men 98 to 99%. That's a pretty wow. high percent. And so, you know, we made it through. And, and I, by the way, I had more charges against me than any other defendant. I think I had a total of 23 charges, you know, between Oregon and oh. Nevada. So 23 felony charges. And had they convicted me on those, um, you know, the, the time the, that would have added it up, you know, the, the minimum mandatory sentences would have been over 100 years. And oh, if, my they would have applied, if they would have applied maximums to that, it would have added up to like 312 years or something of the sort. Okay, so in other words, they, they wanted me dead. The other thing that was interesting was, is every single defendant, including my father and brothers, were offered some sort of plea deal. They never offered me a plea deal. And I don't know why that is. I wouldn't have taken it, of course, but it was just interesting that it was never offered. I think that they thought they had me pegged to the, to the wall and there was no need to, to discuss anything. Now, of course, I went through this trial without an attorney, although I did have many people that were willing to counsel and, and help me and, and guide me. But I, I mostly re relied upon prayer and upon fasting and, and upon the guidance from my, my Father in Heaven. And I know that all of you out were praying. Amen. And, and a miracle happened. And we were able to beat the odds. And, it, and I can't say that it was by our 